Welcome back to NBL Now, our roundtable editions during this FIBA break. We'll be back for round nine very, very shortly. I'm Jack Heron alongside Derek Rucker and Damon Lowry. Last time we spoke about the Sydney Kings and the team that we're about to talk about is apparently the Kings kryptonite, the Tasmania Jack Jumpers, who I think, Damon, you've got a bit of a soft spot for. I do. I have a soft spot for those Jack Jumpers, those little poisonous little ants, the way they just march in. I love their leadership from Scott Roth. I love everything about what that team has been built and how they put together. And the biggest thing I love is the little big man. Well, I think it's a team that you would fit perfectly in now. <laughs> if we could take you back 20 years, you'd be a really good match. I think Scott Roth is the type of guy that would appreciate the amount of talent that you have and your scrap and your fight. I'm waiting. You setting me up? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yes, I, I resonate with everything that Scott yeah. Roth brings to the table. I love that. The accountability. He don't care who it is. Milton Doyle, MVP candidate, mm. playing like garbage. Mm. Sit down. He don't care about that. It's all about defending the island and the culture of the Tasmanian people. The buy-in. I, I can't help but is he a Navy SEAL? Is he a is he a Jedi master? Whatever he is, he can bring guys into that organization that the other club wouldn't want. And now look at him. They lift. Anthony Drimmick, Majuk Ding, Jared Bearstow. Jack McVay. Jack McVay. I yeah. mean, look, look what he can do. And it's all about the culture. And you know what? This is not an indictment on Jack McVay because I love everything about that guy. But if you look at him physically, athletically, all the measurables, Damon, there's no way he should be a top five player in this league. But it's about, it's a testament to him as a person and Scott Roth and the system he's created that it brings out all the positive attributes in Jack and it's got him, if this is his potential, Jack is right there. Mm. So they're seven and five at the break. They're third mm. on the table. How do you grade their season? This is going to be a very interesting one, I think. They're the team that it can knock off with like they've already done. They went to Sydney yeah. and dominated. Took the dub. Yep. Convincingly. Mm. Sydney tries to come back to Tassie for some get back. Nah, ain't gonna happen. They defended the island. They beat the top teams. They go to Melbourne United. They go to John Kane Arena. Mm. Put the ball in Milton Doyle's hands after the little big man Jordan Crawford set him up. And then Milton Doyle with the dagger. They've got the big scalps. For that reason, I got them a B minus because sometimes the reason why it's a B minus because then they'll lose the game they shouldn't lose. They went to Southeast Melbourne, lost that game when they were hot. Exactly. Home at home for New Zealand, a, a week in New Zealand and dropped that one. It's it's hard to gauge where they truly are. I've got them at a C plus, and this is probably my most critical grade of all the teams. I could be going a bit harsh here, but I think something that would be driving Scott Roth mad is a lack of defensive intensity mm. and effectiveness. They are well below the Jack Jumper standard that we've grown accustomed to. And I think for that reason, he would be somewhat concerned about how far this team can go. But they're far better offensively. They're the number one offensive team in the competition. They're patient. They play at the slowest pace and most efficient. So how he's able to put this all together and get the sweet spot. He'd probably mm. take a little less offensive efficiency for an increase in defense because we know historically we can go back 40 years and if you are not in the top four or five defensively, you do not have a chance to win the title. Mm. Question one of the big three is around the championship in that case. Are they a championship winning team or are they a very good team in this competition? They execute well in the half court. They have two, possibly three game winners that you can rely on to take over a game on any given night. They rebound the ball pretty well, and they have an excellent coach. So I put them in the hunt to be a championship contender. But they'll need, they'll need the ladder to go their way. To get there, they need to finish so that they can be in the semifinals with their home court against the Kings. Mm -hmm. I, no, I don't even care about the no. home court. They've just got to be matched up with the Kings. If they're matched up with Melbourne United, bye-bye. I got them as a championship contender for those very reasons. And it's one thing when you come into the league and you make it to the grand final championship series and you yeah. just lose, you got that hunger. 
Scott Roth went out and upgraded his roster. He mm. says, I need more points. Because that's the thing. When the, when the game slows down, you can play defense all you want. But if you go up the other end, you can't get buckets. He now got bucket getters and Majuk Ding off the bench. And yeah. Dremick. Um, Jordan Crawford is a big offensive upgrade from um, the Joshua Jet. Yeah. So they got all the pieces there. Now, like you said, what he's trying to do is now tinker with it to make sure we don't forget about that defensive end. But absolutely a championship contender. Can you imagine that joint hosting another a, a grand a championship series? Yeah. Oh. Question two. And it's probably a good time to ask this at the break because he's just come back and his last two games have been fabulous, 20 and 13, and then six and seven, but was plus 20 in that game. I'm talking about Will Magne here. Is he the biggest wild card in the NBL right now? He's the piece that can change that whole defensive equation, Jack, because it changes how the guards are able to defend and it allows Majuk Dang to play a little bit more away from the hole and let let Will worry about blocking shots. And on the rebounding, Majuk can float around and pick up scraps when he's in the lineup. And I saw that lineup being utilized a bit. Marcus Lee has been a bit of foul trouble, but I think it's actually going to help Marcus as well. You can reduce his minutes. And so his foul trouble isn't as much of a problem. Of right. It's not that big of a deal. And Will has looked really good offensively also. He's been smart, and he's only going to get better as he gets his basketball skill set back in order. So, again, this break will be good because they get some practice time. I'm sure they'll get up and down as a unit. Mm. Don't you hate when coaches would be drilling you out during these types of breaks? You're like, hey, my man, can we get up and down (laughs) just a little bit? Mm. We're in the middle of the season. I don't want to be doing no UCLA defending the cutter type Mm. drill. Let's – Roll the ball out. Let's get up let's get and up. down. Yeah. Will Magne was out of the league. His body was betraying him. I almost forgot that he was ever in the league. It was that bad. Now he's back and healthy, and he's got that intangible. He's got that hunger. He yeah. missed out on all that cool stuff that was happening. And all those ants was marching. We look back, and there's Will on his bad leg trying to march with him. He wasn't there. Now that he's healthy, he brings that extra little reju- that rejuvenation. Yeah. So if guys tend to get a little bit lackadaisical, he goes, hey, don't you be taking this for granted. And you know who's the king of that in that team? Jack McVay. Mm-hmm. He won't let you take things, these moments for granted. And to your point, Marcus Lee, you can go buck wild now, Marcus, because we got Will over here to back you up. The other interesting thing for Magne is, remember, he was in Boomer's conversations. Absolutely. Yep. And he has a unique skill in blocking the ball, mm-hmm. blocking shots, contesting shots, altering shots that that Boomer's lineup could still utilize. Now, it's more of a long shot, but if he can get himself back into shape and get his basketball together and stay healthy, he has a world-class elite skill that can be utilized at FIBA level. Mm. Question number three. Now, I think Tasmania Jack Jumpers fans would love to hear you both say yes, but I'm not going to dictate what comes next. Milton Doyle signed a new two-year deal. Could he be the next Bryce Cotton in terms of import that comes to Australia and stays with a franchise for a long time? Oof, I would love to see that happen. Milton Doyle has the demeanor, sometimes a little bit too much. Hop, he's too eager sometimes to hop in the back seat. But the more he's here, and then this, is, <laughs> this Australian culture, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Milton Doyle would be that perfect big guard. The, and Scott Roth even said, he goes, the NBA is looking for all these young guys and this potential. Yeah. We got a pro right here. He's already a mature age, grown man, family man that gets it, can do everything you want on a basketball floor. So if he ever got his citizenship, but like he doesn't have the American, I mean, the Australian wife, the, the, the family that would make it a little bit easier. So it might be a little bit harder. So when that happens, he could be in his late 30s. So, but if it was to happen earlier, it'd be fantastic. I think, you know, you're looking to get the best out of him and the most out of, out of him while he's in his prime, which it appears to be right now. Uh, had a couple of down performances where you said, like, it, it looked like he didn't play with enough gusto and, and get after it and give me the ball. Some of it was due to foul trouble, but other times, you know, the Crawford thing can probably be a little bit difficult at times because he is a guy – Milton Doyle, that is, who likes to have the ball in his hands also. Mm. And sometimes when it gets in the fourth quarter, if you haven't had 
a suitable amount of touches. You know how it is. Mm, game to game, you can lose your you can lose your rhythm and lose your touch. So I think that's something that they probably need to get a little bit better, but it's certainly doable. Plus and minus, what's the biggest plus from a Tasmania point of view so far? I think it's their style of play. They know who they are. Um, they're going to go out there, and you have to beat them. They're, they're a very hard team to defend because their actions are so good, and they've got a little water, bur- a little water bug out there who's very good with the basketball. He can shoot it from the three. They've got Doyle, as we spoke about. They've got Jack McVeigh. So they've got high-level guys who can get it done, and then they're continuing to add pieces. And schematically, they're exceptional. Scott Roth runs great stuff. There's a term for that. Everything you just said can be encapsulated in the Jackie way. The Jackie way. Jordan Crawford showed up and they interviewed him. And he goes, you know, what do you like about the Jack Jumpers? He goes, the Jackie way. Mm. They know when they're not playing the Jackie way. I can, I was watching the, the last game. I called the last game. I go, this is the Canes way. This ain't the Jackie way. They have bought into everything that Scott Roth did when he took them, those guys, and they went down the coast to learn about what is it about Tasmanian people. It's yeah, I wouldn't have gone things. on that one. I would have checked out. And I'd, I'd be like, yo, hey, y'all send me the send me the link. I'll read about That's it. Not the- I'm, I'm going to be up in my room chilling. I don't have time for all that. Apples? No, 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 apples, no, no. Thank God I don't play nowadays. All that stuff Devonport, no. Right yeah. Bernie, Long no. Said, yeah. Launceston, no. For Darren Crocker. <laughs> Now, the Jackie Way travels. Anybody who wants to be a free agent, you want to come over to the Jack Jumpers? Anthony Drimmick, Majuk Ding, guys like that, guess what? You better adopt the Jackie Way or it ain't going to happen. Because I know what they will do. You'll win. Mm. Minus, I think you're on the same page here with you, Minus. Defensively, they've got to pick it up. They've got to get it right. Uh, Marcus Lee, I think he does a good job around the rim, but I would still love to see a bit more strength around the Mm. rim. Finishing because there's nothing worse when your playmakers are creating for you and you're all fumbly with the ball. Yeah. So I think that because I think ideally the mix with him and Magne is almost 20 20. Yeah. 20 minutes, 20 minutes. And that allows Will to not play with too much physical burden as he gets his basketball strength. I want to give a little sneaky shout out to the old school. Remember Big Willie Simmons? Of course. Mm-hmm. Big Will. A guy that you wouldn't necessarily say is a 25 to 30 point scorer, but when he posted up, if yeah. you tried to switch, Will was a beast down low when he needed to be. And that's what Marcus Lee needs to be able to do. Because you play the Kings, they're going to switch. You're going to have a little guy on you. Can switches everything too. And he's too passive in that regard. But in saying all of that, there, my minus for them is scoring droughts. Sometimes just going to score mm-hmm. and drought. Milton Doyle, a, lo- a little bit like Jaden Adams, just kind of goes to sleep. Just have to double check and see if he actually wants to play. He's too good to be that passive at times. So I right. think a scoring drought at the wrong time hurts them. Mm. Well, you've been on the same page for much of Tasmania. I wonder if you're on the same page in terms of predictions. Where will they be finishing at the end of the regular season? Champagne Ooh. coming down the eyes. Champagne. What does that mean? They're going to be in a championship series. Oh. They're going to be in a championship series. And I'll go one further, Jack. They're going to win it. The Tasmania Jack Jumpers are going to get past the semifinal series. And if that's the Kings, I'm putting them in. And then we're when recording this, right? We're, this, is all, this is all good. This, look, is, being, this yeah, is being saved I'm, up. I'm okay, saying great. it right now. I'm not going to be on the fence like some people. I'm not going to be like that. I'm saying the Tasmania Jack Jumpers have already shown me they can beat the United in your yard. They have already beat the Kings in your yard. All they got to do is get there. And I feel like it's their time. So you didn't really address where they were going to finish at the end of the ladder, but that bold statement was beyond preposterous. Second. But I hear you. <laughs> beyond preposterous. <laughs> so I've got Tasmania finishing fifth. Blasphemous. Yeah, my notes fifth. However, I'm going to partially agree with you and say I think there is a there is an avenue for them to get to the championship series. I think that can happen. They've got enough there. But I think as they try and piece all of this together, there are going to be some painful losses in this in this part of the season to come. But by rounds, the final three rounds, they're going to be humming and really hard to beat. But there are going to be some disappointments along the way. And But I agree with you. Like I said, if they can get Sydney in the semifinals matchup, 
They can take the Kings. Very intriguing. Very, very intriguing. <laughs> well done, you two. Thanks for being with us on NBL Now, our special roundtable editions. We're having a whole lot of fun. We'll catch you next time.